Welcome to ETM 260 Computer Aided Design. This is Lecture 2, Introduction to NX. This video is supplemented by the given PowerPoint of the class. Please keep in mind there are multiple versions of NX. There are multiple features that do not change from version to version. However, the display and the location of some of the icons and the toolbars may vary. Let's just start by opening NX. When you open an X, this will be your welcoming page. This section over here will provide you the new features of each one of the versions that you will be using for an X. This part over here will give you different choices, such as library. It will be, give you a connection to help online. It will also give you history, which is basically the parts that you have done in the past. So let's just start by simply clicking on new to open a new part. In this window, what we could see is all the different templates that are available in NX. It all depends on the application that you will be using, whether it's design, analysis, or drawing, or manufacturing. For this particular class, we'll focus on model, assembly, and drawing. When you are developing a drawing, it is important that you start with the proper units. The selection of the units are given in this drop-down menu. We have the choices between millimeters and inches. For this particular case, we'll start with millimeters. We'll select model and we click OK. This is the primary screen given by an X. The toolbar positions and icons might be different depending on the modifications done by the previous user. The main features of this screen are we have the menu bar, which are basically drop down menus which include all the tasks available in NX. The NX toolbars, which are toolbars organized based on the tasks to be performed. More details about each toolbar will be provided later on. The selection toolbar. This toolbar provides all the tools to ensure that the necessary items are properly selected depending on the application. The direct sketch section shows all the tools to create in a sketch. The resource bar provides the information about a model, online resources, help, history, and other features available in NX. The graphic window shows model and the details about it. We also have the Dantum coordinate system, which shows the three prim primary planes and the three primary axes. In the resource bar, we could find the part navigator. This is basically the history of the sketches and features performed to create an object. This navigator also allows the user to suppress and activate features. For example, you click on a feature, right click, suppress it, notice that it will disappear, and then you could do the process to unsuppress it again. You could also show and hide features, for example, for sketches, right click and show. Notice that now we have it over here, and if you do not want to see it, simply right click and hide. Another important component of this navigator is to show us the constraints. Notice that for the sketches, you will tell us that it's fully constrained. As we will see in future lectures, constraints are essential logical operators to ensure that an object and an assembly maintain their size, their position, with respect to other elements. Let's just start with a brand new sketch. Before we do so, let me give you a note in regards to the PowerPoint and the textbook. If it gives you the choice of menu, it means that you could go simply to the drop down menu and select the particular icon based on the instructions given. If it says toolbar, it simply means to go to the particular toolbar and select the icon of the tool. For example, if we're going to create a brand new sketch, we could go into menu, insert, and a sketch, or you could go to the home toolbar and click on the sketch. Please select the one that is more convenient for you. 
Once you click in the sketch, notice that a new window will appear. Generally, all the fields for the windows need to be completed in order to properly create the task. In this case, we need to select the proper plane. If it's a brand new part, you will have three choices. The XY plane, which is the top plane. You will have the XZ plane, which is the front plane. Or you will have the YZ plane, which is the side plane. For this case, we're going to simply select the XY plane, which is the top, and we're going to click OK. Notice that this is going to rotate, and it will always show you the XY plane, regardless what original plane you selected, so that you could use the XY coordinates to select your position. Before we start with the different sketching tools, it is important to understand how to use the snap points in an X. The snap points allow you to select specific points in a line or a curve, such as intersection, center, quadrant, midpoint, endpoint, etc. Notice that if they are highlighted in blue, that means that the uh, snap feature is, is active. To deactivate it, simply click on it and notice that the highlighted blue will disappear. If you want to activate it again, simply click on it. To create a sketch, we will use all the tools available in the direct the sketch menu. We will start with a line. Notice that when you click on a line, it will give you these choices. For a line, the choices are basically what kind of input you could provide. You could provide coordinates or you could, or you could provide the parameters to be able to enter the information. For example, if you enter the coordinates, you could basically have to give the positions for the beginning and for the end of the line. You could randomly choose them in the screen as such, or you could actually provide values to them. You could provide them by notice every time that you move the cursor, the position will change and you could select the point or you could enter it using your keyboard. For example, you, if we want to go from the origin, zero, zero, and then the, the final position, let's see, could be a hundred on a hundred and it will be drawn as such. If you use the second mode, it will give you the length and the angle. For example, you could select the origin to be the starting point. And then notice that in some cases, an X, if it has different choices, it will give you alternatives of things to choose. Depending on the choices that it gives you, we're going to select the most appropriate one. In this case, we're going to select the origin. And then you could say a length and an angle. So let's see, for example, we have a length of 120 and we need an angle of 30 degrees and it will be drawn this way. To properly select the input mode, it basically depends on what information is provided in your drawing. The next tool we will be using will be arc. So if you click on arc, notice that in this case, you're given two different methods to create the arc. However, the input men, men, uh, modes are basically as the ones that we had for the line. For the arc method, you could either choose three points, meaning that you choose three points along the, the curve. For example, one, two, and three. If you use an X, Y coordinates, or if you use the alternative mode, you provide a value of the radius, so let's see 50. You provide two points, and then you need to provide the orientation and the size that corresponds to the feature that you would like, for example. For the second arc method, we choose an origin. And for the XY method, you choose the beginning point and the ending point of your curve. If you use the alternative method, you choose the origin, then we provide a radius. So let's see, 75. The sweeping angle is the angle that you could have for your arc. 
could, could be for anything from 0 to 360. So let's see, we choose 60. And notice that now what we need to select is where we would like the arc to be located. So it's simply choose a direction or a position. Notice that it will be created. The next tool we will be using will be Profile. And it's a very useful tool that combines a line and an arc without having to start a new feature every single time. And you could go from one to the other one simply by clicking on the object type. And it's created exactly in the same way. We go from line, so you could select a line and a line, and then you could create arc, and then notice that it creates it as a string. And then you could create another arc, for example, if you need to. And then you could go back to a line. And then if you want to get out of this profile, you could simply press escape. And the feature is created. The next tool we'll be working on will be circle. For a circle, notice that you're given two different choices, either a center point and a curve point, or three points in a curve, for example. If we choose center and point in the arc or in the circle, we simply select the point and then click the location. Or we could once again choose three points in a circle and then notice. Notice that this method uses simply the coordinate system. You could also use the other mode and use the center. The diameter, for example, will be 100 and it will be created. Or for the second method, it will be three points. You provide a diameter. So once again, let's see 100. And then you select a point and then a location where you want to place it. So let's make it there. The next tool is a rectangle, so if we click on the choice, notice that there are three different methods. Either we choose two points in the rectangle, and once again you have the same two input modes as we had before, so let's try two points. You simply click the two corners that you will like for the rectangle, then you have three points. This last two methods are very useful if the rectangle has some type of inclination or angle. So we choose one, two, and then notice we have three. Or the last method you use, you choose the center of the rectangle. Then basically you choose a width and a height for that particular rectangle. And if we use the other mode, simply gives you the same idea. We provide now quantities that we would like if, if they're given to us. Let's see, 10. A height of let's see 15 and an angle of zero and notice that it's created now we just have to provide a location for it and then the same type of mode works for each one of the three rectangle methods another tool in an X is to create points for that one simply click on the point icon and then in this one simply create or click on the locations where would you like the points to be created. The next tool we'll be using it's an ellipse. Go to the direct sketch and select ellipse. And then notice that we the first thing that we have to do is select the uh, origin of the ellipse. And then we're going to provide values for the major and the minor radii. So let's choose the values of 50, 25. And then the next thing is to choose a angle of rotation. Notice if we have it like this as zero degrees, it will simply be a horizontal ellipse like this one. However, if you choose something different, could for example be 60 degrees, notice that will be rotated. If you wanna simply apply into this, meaning that you could do multiple ellipses, you could simply click on and apply and it will be created. And then the menu will just say here if you want to do more ellipses. However, if you want to simply do one, you could have simply clicked on OK. 
And since we already finished, we could go into cancel. The next tool we'll be, be using will be the Studio Spline. We go to the Direct Sketch, and this is the icon we click on. Notice that it will give us the choices of either through points or by poles, depending on what information is provided in your case. So let's try through pole, through points, and then we just select specific points. If they are randomly selected, we could do it this way. Simply click on different positions in the screen. Once you are done, you could either choose OK or Apply. OK will be if that is the only spline that you would like to create. And Apply is if you want to create this one and create another one without having to reopen the menu. So let's click on Apply. Notice that it's created. Now let's go through Poles. And Poles are simply how they are created. So notice the Poles basically is how the geometry is different in order to create the particular spline. If we do it through the points, notice that the points that we touched were inside of the spline. However, the poles are mathematically created so that they become tangent to the particular spline that we will be using. We'll hit OK. And notice this is now the particular spline that you will have. If you want to modify this or any other feature, notice that you could take the poles or the points and move them around and that will change the particular spline that you will have. And you could do the same thing with the other method that we had. The next tool we will be using is a fillet. A fillet is a tool to remove a corner, such as this one, and convert it into a curve. This is the icon. The way that we could do it is either by using trimming it, meaning that the edge or the uh, corner will disappear or it will remain. For example, if we do trim, we select one line, the second line, and then it will provide a radius that we would like that curve to create, to have. So let's see, for example, we do 50. And notice that since we did trim, it will delete the corner that we had. If we do it on trim, do the same process. Select 50 again. Notice that it will keep it. The next tool is a chamfer, which once again removes a corner and replaces it. But in this case, instead of being a, a curve, it will replace it by a line. So notice that we have chamfer. We select the lines again to make the corner. And then we have the first choice, it will be to have it symmetrical meaning that the distance between uh, the point and the ending lines of this line and the point of this line will be the same. So for example, let's see, we choose it to be 30. And now notice that it's symmetrical. By symmetrical, notice that the distance that we selected is exactly the same from the corner to the end of the line. If the other choice will be, you choose the two lines, it will be non-symmetrical. And then in one line, for example, you could make it to be 40, and the other one you could make it to be 20. You notice that that will give you the particular chamfer in that case. Now let's go over some of the display drawing display tools for an index. Let's say you want to zoom in on a particular area. You could click on this icon so that you could zoom in on a particular point. If you want to go back and zoom out, you could click on this icon or simply click on Control F to bring you back and show you all the sketch or all the features that you have. If you would like to pin your particular drawing or a sketch, simply click on this icon and then move side to side to the location that you would like. If you would like to rotate clicking here and then you will be able to rotate your screen. If you want to go back to the original view for your sketch, simply right click and it gives you the choice of orient to view the sketch or do shift F8.
Once you are done with a particular sketch, you need to always finish the sketch. Notice that it will bring you back to the original orientation, orientation that it was chosen at the beginning. If you want to have information about the model, you could go to the resource menu. And notice that if you click in here, you will see that we have, in this particular case, we have two sketches. Click on one. Notice that nothing is highlighted on that one. Compared to the second one, notice that everything is highlighted on the second one. If you have a sketch that is basically empty, you could simply right click on it and delete it by simply clicking delete or in the keyboard, the uh, key delete. If you want to show your sketch, simply click on the sketch, right click and say hide and it will just simply be hidden for, from the moment. You want to show it again, simply click and show. An alternative way to modify the display in an X is by using the mouse. For example, to select, simply click on the left button. For a shortcut, click on the right button. To zoom in, in or out, simply use the wheel. To zoom, click on the left button and the middle button at the same time and drag. To pan, click on the right and middle buttons at the same time and drag. And to rotate, simply click on the middle button and drag. In NX, there are multiple hard keys that can be used. These are very important since they provide a shortcut to multiple functions in NX. This table provides you the list of the most important hotkeys in NX. Please make sure that you explore it and use it whenever is necessary.